Hello, my name is Jim. Welcome to my booktube channel about books and reading and stuff. This video is my April wrap up. I know it's a bit early. I wanted to talk about the global diversity of what I've been reading. This month has been a good month for global diversity. The first book I finished this month was by an author from Australia, a certain Clive James from Australia. Clive James was born in Australia, but he moved to England in 1962 to go to university in Cambridge, and he never really left. He moved to London and then back to Cambridge again, and sadly he passed away in 2019, but he had been a very heavy drinker and heavy smoker in his life, and this caused him some illness later on in his life. Play All was his book about the TV series that become such a part of the media we consume in this day and age. Uh, TV series like The Sopranos, Game of Thrones, The Wire. This is a fascinating book. Clive James has not lost his critical eye, but I found it more interesting when he was talking about the series I'd watched, like The Wire or Game of Thrones, rather than series I hadn't seen, like West Wing and The Sopranos, because I did, couldn't really relate to everything he was talking about. It's a very interesting book and anyone who's watching these TV series it makes a interesting. The second book I read was a novella by Nedi Okarafo who is a Nigerian American. It's America, it's Nigeria and the story is about Binti who is from a tribe like the Himba tribe of Namibia who are famous for living in a desert landscape and adorning themselves, particularly the women, with this substance called ochize, which is a mixture of the clay and uh, the okra. Binti is a young girl from this Himba tribe and she is invited to the a prestigious intergalactic university. This is an example of Afrofuturism. Afrofuturism combines African culture and the traditions with a futuristic setting. Uh, when I used to read science fiction in the 1980s, I didn't read any African writers, but now there's a few on my radar. I read Octavia e. Butler earlier in the year and really liked Octavia e. Butler. Now I'm reading Nidhi Okarofo. And also there's N.K. Jemison is on my radar, so I'm looking forward to reading some more. Binti got the Hugo and Nebula Awards in 2016 for the best novella. The story is this African girl who runs away from home to go to this intergalactic university. And on the way the ship is hijacked by an alien race. It's a very interesting novel. I the plot is very good, the characters are uh, very interesting, particularly the title character Binti. This is the first of a series of three books and I hope to read the other two at some point in the future. The third book I read was Villa Pacifica by Kapka Casabova. Like Clive James, she's moved around a bit. She was born in Bulgaria in Sofia. And then she moved to New Zealand where she had her education and now she's living in Scotland. The book follows Uta, who's a Finn, and her husband Jerry, who's English, who go to this eco-retreat on the east on the west coast of South America, somewhere like Ecuador or Peru. And things get quite dark and quite strange as uh, El Nino approaches. The eco-retreat has these animals that have been saved from traffickers, like there's a jaguar, there's monkeys, there's an iguana. It's very exotic and it's very strange and I enjoyed it. The fourth book I finished this month, April, was Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. Leo Tolstoy is from Russia, so this is another country. And I linked to the video about this here. I enjoyed this. This is a bit of a mammoth. The final book I read this month is from Japan. This is the novella Kitchen 
by Banana Yoshimoto. I saw Kitchen recommended on Katie's channel, Katie of Books and Things, and I've seen other booktubers recommend it. I enjoyed this book. This is the first book by a Japanese writer that isn't Murakami that I've read. The novella starts with Mikage. Mikage is living with her grandmother. Her parents died when she was little. Uh, Mikage is in her early 20s and then her grandmother sadly dies. Mikage is feeling very grief-stricken by this. This is a novella about the effects of bereavement. Three days after the funeral, I was still in a daze, steeped in a sadness so great I could barely cry. At the funeral, she meets Yuichi, who she sees is very upset by her grandmother's death as well. Uh, Yuichi worked in a flower store and Mikage's grandmother used to buy flowers at the store nearly every day. Uh, a short while later, Yuichi invites Mikage to stay with him and with his mother, Antrigime Eriko. And it's a strange family dynamic, but they are trying to make the best of a difficult situation. Mikage observes, the more I found out about these people, the more I didn't know what to expect, but I trusted their kitchen. In Eriko's household, Mikage sleeps on a very comfortable couch next to the kitchen. Kitchens will feature a lot in this novel on cooking. Cooking is a means of comfort and there's a lot about food in this novel. Wrapped in blankets, I thought, how funny it was that tonight too, here I was, sleeping in the kitchen. There's some beautiful writing here and I really enjoyed it. Here are some examples. Although I was raised with love, I was always lonely. The night was so deathly silent that I felt I could hear the sound of the stars moving across the heavens. So that was my wrap up for April, very geographically diverse. I've been following the Invisible Cities project, but I haven't been uh, religiously sticking with the countries they chose. This month they chose Peru, Vietnam and Equatorial Guinea. I didn't read books from any of those countries, although Villa Pacifica may have been set in Peru. The country is not specified. Next month will be Madagascar, North Korea and Romania. I have a book for Madagascar lined up, which I'll tell you about in my May TBR. Uh, as for my April TBR, I haven't really started it. I just, but I did successfully complete my March TBR, having read Villa Pacifica and Anna Karenina. If you like this video, you can like and subscribe below and I will see you on the next video. Goodbye.